Beethoven. I'm gonna talk about Beethoven. And in fact, I'm gonna talk about Beethoven quite a lot. I think enough to fill a video series or possibly a podcast. Um, I'm still trying to decide between the two and it's probably gonna be a weird mixture of both. Now, why will I talk about Beethoven? Um, the direct um, the direct reason for doing this is that I've been reading biographies of Beethoven. Uh, one of this, this one is one that I've read and this is also one that I've read. And it has been so interesting to read everything that was in these biographies that I really must talk to it. I uh, cannot contain it all in, in my head. I really have to talk about it because it's just too exciting. Um, yeah, so so why is it exciting? I, I really would like to um, explain a little bit um, in this video why it's, it's so cool. And I think, well, one of the things that... that is of course that Beethoven was one of the greatest musicians of all time. And me as a, a very, very deep lover of music, I, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in how such a person lived his life, how he thought. And, um, well, maybe I can even learn some, uh, some of his tricks or maybe not even tricks. More. I can learn from his way of viewing music in becoming a better musician myself. That will be really my first goal in um, studying uh, uh, the life of a musician like Beethoven. But even if I was not a musician and didn't want to learn, it would still be extremely interesting. Because, first of all, we have the character of Beethoven, which is, um, he's really one of the, the stereotypical genius figures. You know, he... He grew up kind of kind of lonely, and he was never really he never really fit in with uh, with the cool kids, let's just say. And uh, he had a temper, and he, sometimes he really got angry all of a sudden. And then he had just these these bouts where he would write music for music for hours a day, and he just lock himself up and then come out and have written one of one of the coolest things that that ever ever was there. So it's just it's really dramatic, like a movie, which is. It's just so much fun to, to read about. And then you have the time in which Beethoven lived. It's, it's the, the end of the 18th century and it's the start of the 19th century. And this was just a time in which so much stuff was happening. You had the um, transition really from enlightenment into romanticism. Um, and this is coupled with the way they thought about art, which is then directly applied to what Beethoven thought himself. Um, they really saw it as um, a journey to the ultimate expression of beauty and uh, meaning or something. It's, it's, re it's, it's quite vague. It's really not the way we think about music right now, which is more of an, I guess, the most... Um, the most normal way today is to think of music as an expression of oneself. Like, like we we really um, we really appreciate like when someone really is um, genuine in music today, which is strangely enough something that Beethoven kind of also started. But back then it was also kind of a a journey in a way to to beauty and. Well, that's just super interesting, and they, and they um, they even like they were very conscious of this in the in those times. They wrote books and they philosophized about what music really should be, what what aesthetics really should be present in music or art in general. And well, yeah, that's just this coupled with one of the greatest musicians is just makes for an incredibly interesting story. And then we have um, the other things that happened in those times, which is just, well, the French Revolution was going on. And, well, everyone was mad at each other. And <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's enough to have fun with. <clears throat> so as kind of an introduction or more like a, a kickoff to this whole thing, I would like to have a little discussion about a very central uh, issue or, well, Let's not be negative, it's not really an issue, it's, it's a topic um, that comes up when you talk about a person like Beethoven. 
And that is, um, well, really the first question is, do we call him a genius? And the second thing is, um, who are we talking about? Are we talking about the man Beethoven or are we talking about the big Beethoven? More like the icon and or the, the image of Beethoven. And, <clears throat> well, um, to start us off, it's why, why is this even an issue? And I think um, it is really an issue because this man has written so much stuff that is so uh, pretty <laughs> or, or beautiful or however you want to call it um, that it just seems a, a bit, little bit unreal that he was a normal guy. Like, well, me and myself, I like music, I can play some piano and I tend to write some stuff but um, of the things I've written, there's probably maybe there are more, maybe one or two things that I really like myself. And, uh, well, at the same time, you have someone like Beethoven, who has just written hundreds and hundreds of beautiful, beautiful pieces uh, of music. And there seems to be just such a division between that and, and normal people who, like, <laughs> do, will not succeed at this that you, you start to think like, hmm, maybe there were, there's just something different. Maybe he's not really made of flesh and blood, you know. And of course, this is coupled with the fact that now when you, when you accomplish something like this, that you are remembered and people talk about you and everyone knows you and your music is played everywhere and your name is on a lot of stuff and... Well, couple that also with the fact that he has now been dead for uh, almost 200 years. And really, the man has been gone long ago and only the image is still prevailing. You really get a distorted view of what someone really was like. Um, and I hope through these biographies to really get a more clear view of what uh, someone was like. But it does evoke the feeling of that you're talking about something else than a man, more more a... Yeah, a figure, you know, more more of an, almost more like an idea. Like, you know, in V for Vendetta, it's a good movie. It's talking about, is, are you a man or an idea? Well, anyway. Sidetrack. <clears throat> so I was thinking about how we should look at uh, a man like Beethoven. And I thought, well, maybe we can just um, take it from something that he has written himself. And... Um, I want to read a little bit from a letter that he has written at some point. And he is talking here about himself as an artist. And he says, The true artist has no pride. He sees, unfortunately, that art has no limits. He has a vague awareness of how far he is from reaching his goal. And while others may perhaps admire him, he laments that he has not yet reached the point to which his better genius only lights the way for him like a distant sun. So, um, that just, uh, well, makes it <laughs> in a way more complex, but um, also in a, in a different way, it um, shows that he himself didn't really see um, uh, he, himself as a person, really as the, at the front of all this. He was just the discoverer. Um, so there is this distant sun that he's talking about. And this distant sun is like the ultimate uh, expression of art. And he himself, he's not the creator of this art. Although, of course, he is. But it's not really how he viewed it. He is an explorer in the world. And he is slowly starting to get a glimpse of what this, this perfect art might be. So I think... I think that's a really nice way to look at things because um, in that way we don't um, we don't have to see even well we don't have to attach value to a person like it's not the person himself who is really responsible for the creation it's the the creation is responsible for the creation and the person is responsible for the discovery of the creation. I don't really know if that makes a lot of sense and it's probably uh, a bit deep for <laughs> for a first video and talking about uh, an introduction to Beethoven but I, I 
I think it, it, it reveals a little bit of, of the how the interesting stuff that we're going to talk about. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And um, I'm going to start with talking about uh, just the first years when he was young, see how he developed. And uh, after that, we're going to go into uh, his works and uh, we're going to listen to some of his works. And uh, it's just going to be very exciting. And I can't wait to uh, to start. Peace out.